over 100 years ago, 11 acres of land for camp here was donated so that underprivileged Columbus City children could, quote, love the trees and wildflowers and beasts of the soil. Some of you may already know that this is a special place to Katie and has long been the venue she wanted for her wedding. Our house is literally on the north side of camp, and when Katie was older, her dad put a ladder up against the fence so she could climb over and walk to camp. When her days as a camper were over, Katie became a junior counselor and then a counselor here. This very special place helped her develop as a person, it confirmed her love of working with children, and set her on her course to become a teacher. And with their marriage here today, Camp Mary Orton has now become a special place for both Katie and Jordan. From the time Katie was a little girl, we would go down to Florida, usually in March, to spend about a week with her Grandma Jewel and Grandpa Pete. Almost every day in the late afternoon around this time, we would have a happy hour, either outside under their awning or on their screened-in porch. We'd have drinks, snacks, conversation, maybe some jokes, and sometimes a neighbor might stop by. Katie, always cute when she was young, she began referring to our happy hour as happy time, because everyone seemed to be just that, happy. So I'd like to invoke the memory of those past happy times. So thank you all for joining us for what is truly our present day happy time. Welcome, and we hope you all enjoy yourselves. Cheers. Jordan, you have been so good to Katie over the past couple of years. I literally cannot count the number of times that Katie's come home from a date when we were living together or she's texted me. She's like, Jordan's too good. I don't deserve him. She's like, he's the best, sweet baby. <laughs> Everyone probably already knows that Katie's like the most fun, energetic, and loud person. Not only is she super bold and confident, but she really gets her confidence from God. While she's outspoken, she's also quick to be humble, to admit fault, and to place other people above herself. You stick by your friends, both in like the fun times and in, in people's sufferings. This character that she has has come from her placing her trust in God in a continual way and relying on him to grow her into a really godly woman. And Jordan, you already know this, you're super lucky to have her as a wife. You are a woman who has become committed to love people around you. You also have become a fighter, and I feel like that is so cool. Becoming a fighter of the people that God has placed in your life, but also for your relationship with God. When you're affronted with a challenge, you are not afraid to have beef with God. But in the midst of that, you seek to understand and learn more about who God is in ways that he may be working. You're patient with him. Jam Jam, you are a wise man who truly respects God and the way that you conduct your life. One thing that I've always appreciated about you is your ability to communicate God's word to those around you. That is a gifting that God has given you, and it is badass. You're a great man who puts the needs that you have aside for others in front of you, and you are active to seek to meet those needs. You've always been really caring and thoughtful towards me and many others, including all the guys here and a lot of people in this room. Through our friendship, you've helped me through a lot of hard times, pointed me towards God and his perspective in the situation. We've also laughed about some really dumb stuff together. You're my best friend, and I've loved getting to live with you. And uh, yeah, I'm glad we get to continue our friendship in this new kind of stage of your life. Katie, you already know this, but you're marrying a man who is extremely faithful to his friends and his relationship with God and has been deeply impacted by his friendship that he has with God. I could like go on about like the qualities of Jam Jam. He's a man of integrity. He loves hard. You know, like this is a man who is dedicated to the people in his lives. You have a drive to be in people's corners. Whether that be spiritually, you know, you feel like pray for this guy. I'm going to like talk to him about the hard thing. I'm going to like share scripture with him. To you being relationally involved with people. You know, like you are somebody who just wants to find out what your purpose is in the people's lives around you. Katie, thank you for being the woman that God needed Jam Jam to have in his life. 
And Jam, thank you for being the man that she needed. So to the burdens. I promise to prioritize my relationship with the Lord first and foremost and to commit to pursuing knowing him more. I promise to allow you to know me and to open up to you even when I don't feel like it or even when it's difficult. You've made our relationship one where I feel safe and loved and have the ability to come to you with all of my brokenness. I promise to try to wait patiently at restaurants when you take 30 minutes or more to decide what you want to eat. Thank you. I promise to remain faithful to you alone, physically and emotionally. I promise to make our home a place that is inviting, warm, and welcoming to our friends and family, a home that we can host lots of people in. I promise to strive to order less Uber Eats and DoorDash and to cook more for you, though I know it won't be easy. And I promise that when hard times come, to extend God's grace to you and love, and to continue to view you as his precious son, and to communicate how much God cares for you. I promise to continue to be goofy and weird with you, even when we're old and wrinkly. Jordan, I'm fully convinced that you entering into my life was an act of the Lord's loving kindness towards me. God redeemed me and gave me new life through Christ's death on the cross, which would have been more than enough, but he chose to continue to bless me with you. I'm so pumped to spend the rest of my life with you. You're my favorite person in the whole world, and I can't imagine going on trips with, raising a family with, or doing life with anyone except for you. I love you always. First, I promise to take direction and leadership from God to be a loving and faithful husband. When I fail, I promise not to live in my failure, but to be led by God and live under His grace. I promise to challenge you to think and to be creative about different things in life. And I promise to be patient with you and initiate with you even when you're in petty moods. <laughs> I promise to encourage you and push you back to your position with God and to know how much of a loving daughter you are in His eyes. I will commit myself to taking us on adventures and exploring new things. I promise to buy you pickles for a snack even though I find them repelling. <laughs> I also, I promise to let you win a game of pool every once in a while, not all the time. And lastly, I promise to take up my role in the work God's doing in your life and to be a partner with you in carrying out God's will for our marriage. I love you, Katie, and I look forward to living life with you. When God, our Savior, revealed his kindness and love, he saved us. Not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He washed away our sins, giving us a new birth and new life through the Holy Spirit. He generously poured out the Spirit upon us through Jesus Christ, our Savior. You see, God is in the business of giving. He is a giver. It pleases Him to intervene into our lives and demonstrate His love and care through His giving. But the greatest gift that any human being could ever receive is God's grace. You see, the result of our natural shortcomings is our innate separation from God. God is perfect, and we are not. Therefore, His judgment, not His kindness, is warranted to us. What will save me from my separation from God? God intervened with a gift. And this gift of our sins being washed away, absolute forgiveness, was made available when Jesus died on the cross. It was his sacrifice that inaugurated our ability to have a relationship with him. When we come to believe this and we invite Jesus into our lives and allow his forgiveness to apply to us, we will inherit eternal life. And it's their hope that all of those hearing this message tonight would also take a part and experience God's grace that he wants to give all of us here.